Say it ain't so, Joe. Say it ain't so. Well, it ain't so, Joe said, even if Joe might have been fibbing a bit. Back in 1987, Twins knuckleballer Joe Negro was ejected from a game against the Angels for allegedly doctoring the baseball. That's the short way to tell it, but the long version is much more entertaining. I'm Jason Foster, and this is Weird Baseball. Okay, so there was one out in the fourth inning of a 2-2 tie in the dog days of August, and Necro was rolling right along with his signature knuckler dancing all over the place when umpire Tim Toshida wanted to take a look at the ball. No big deal, that happens all the time. There could be scuffs or tears or whatever. It didn't seem out of the ordinary. But then Toshida wanted to talk. That's weird. And he wanted to see Necro's glove. This was going to turn into a whole thing, but for good reason. Then more umpires got involved, Twins manager Tom Kelly got involved, Necro pleaded his innocence and just couldn't understand why there was such a hubbub. Then the umps asked Necro to empty his pockets and he was like, sure, no problem, I have nothing to hide. See, nothing in there, nothing in here. I'm totally in it. Well, there is this one thing. That one thing was an emery board, which is a no-no for a pitcher to have on the mound, and the umps gave Necro the heave But you kind of have to admire Necro's attempt to casually get rid of the evidence. LOL. So Necro was ejected, but continued to argue with the umps who confiscated the Emory board while Necro watched with amusement. They also took away some baseballs to try to document the extent of his alleged misdeeds. Then Necro headed for an early shower and what would be a 10-game suspension for doctoring the ball. I should pause here to say that Necro was one of a few prominent pitchers who had long been suspected of scuffing the ball in the 80s. It was kind of an open secret around the league. But this was the first and only time he got caught, or allegedly caught, depending on how much grace you want to extend. Anyway, back to the story. So Necro, who had always been a good-natured jokester, took his punishment pretty well, even going on late night with David Letterman to tell his side of the story and to not so subtly troll the MLB officials who suspended him. Necro said he always kept an injury border in his pocket because as a knuckleball pitcher, he had to keep his fingernails fouled or the pitch wouldn't perform. P.S. He also admitted to having sandpaper. He was cheeky throughout the interview, still claiming his innocence and suggesting the whole thing was a big misunderstanding. He got off a pretty good one-liner, too. So you're telling me that you did not doctor the ball that night? Do I look like a doctor? <laughs> Necro finished the 1987 season with a 7-13 record and a 5.33 ERA, but he did go out on top. He pitched two scoreless innings in the World Series that year and helped the Twins capture their first championship. Not bad. Necro retired after the 1988 season with 221 wins, a respectable 3.59 ERA, and a good amount of big games and big moments, so the Emory board thing just became like a humorous footnote to an otherwise solid career. Necro did do one other pretty notable thing in uniform, though. He hit one career home run way back in 1976. The victim on the mound that day? His brother, fellow knuckleballer and future Hall of Famer, Phil Necro. The evidence might have been stacked against him the night he got caught with an Emory board in 1987, but Necro claimed innocence for the rest of his life. Is the truth debatable? Eh, maybe, but probably not. But it's certainly one of the weirdest and most entertaining baseball stories you'll ever hear.